Part 5. Building Collective Intelligence Equals Building Capacity Here are three more benefits to real-time communication and archivability. Because the network information is distributed, we can extradite action and delegation. Situational awareness goes through the roof. The potential to decentralize the information flow and its management and make certain decisions as a group through crowdsourcing or troubleshooting within the network versus between a targeted two-way conversation is there. And the archive dialogue and media sharing can really help us accelerate our learning curve and understanding of how we operate. We can make sense of fragmented info throughout the network because we can trace it back. Here's an example of what a tweet deck column looks like. This is a feed of various accounts tweeting. The top tweet is the newest tweet. And if you read this, you may not understand exactly what these individuals, these users, are talking about. But the advantage here of having the archive is that it enables a great many things. We're able to look at trends and different topics throughout the day or over a series of days or over an entire project. It allows us to scale our operation or transfer leadership positions a lot easier than we previously could. It makes a fluid environment easier to manage and comprehend. So if we are in a situation where we actually need to move from one to two coordinators daily because the amount of volunteers that we have in the field every day is starting to overtax our coordinator, we can show the new coordinator exactly how we operate because the collective intelligence is both live and archived. Institutional memory as a narrative is now visible within social media. Getting back to that tweet about the shirts in 45 minutes, how did we get there? What does this mean? It's fragmented, right? Well, we can search down earlier in the day and find out that the work request coordinator was coordinating with Team Leader 5 and Team Leader 3 to get them t-shirts. So the even further backstory here is that there's a media, a TV news team, headed out to their sites. So what better way to get some publicity for the organization and make sure they get our name right than having our volunteers wearing our t-shirts. They're coordinating between themselves how to pick up the shirts and make sure they get to the right places. So you can see at the very top, Team Leader 3 is busy. They're not going to be able to pick up the shirts. And that's where we got this. Team Leader 5 says, I'll be there in 15 minutes to pick them up. And these are our sizes. Using social media in our field operations also gives us the ability to do some pretty cool and specific things. We're actually able to send urgent alerts and messages to our ecosystem, and some of them can be automated. So here's an example. The Weather Channel provides, based on zip code, weather alerts for changing weather situations. It can be as simple as getting the daily forecast or as important as getting an alert about a tornado headed in your direction. Within our network, we set up a special alert account it's preloaded to each user's social media accounts and phones. And that receives those automated severe weather alerts. The automation relays the message to our ecosystem instantly. Here's an example in a team leader setting. When we provide the team leader with an orientation, we are going to teach them that if they receive a severe weather alert in the and they're able to do so, that they tweet their status and their geocoded position. So team three is saying, we saw the alert, we're in a basement, and this is where we are. Now on the phones and within the applications, there's also a button that you can hit that records your GPS location and then tweets it out. So you could write this entire message, or as a team leader, you could hit the geocode button and then the send button, and you've only hit two buttons. When time is of the essence, 
safety is most important. Another example of a situation might be where an automated alert has not gone out, but team leader three is on site, they're working outdoors, and it starts to rain, there's thunder and lightning. They tweet into the network that we're in cars waiting out this storm, and this is where we are. Using that same tweet, the coordinator sees it and alerts the other teams in the area to get indoors until the storm passes. The coordinator is monitoring the situation, monitoring weather accounts. They may have the television on, they may be on the internet, they may be monitoring their Twitter feed. They're crowdsourcing local tweets. They're checking in with team leaders as team leaders check in with their locations. They're in constant contact, tweeting useful information, and they can manually access that security alert account. So if they need to provide an update or some other vital information, the security alert account that's pre-registered on each phone is set up so that it pings as if the phone has received a text message because it has. Tweets through the security alert account are different. Throughout the day, a team leader won't be made aware of every individual tweet in the network unless they want to be. It could get pretty annoying. There is a way to set up so that certain accounts and certain tweets actually ping the phone as if receiving a direct text message. When we preload the security alert account, we load it in such a way that if a message is sent using the security alert, it pings the phone in the hopes that the team leader will hear that. Now, in the public space, CNN may have picked up the fact that there was a tornado scare in the town that we were working. So, with a public account, we let everyone know that everybody's safe, teams are back in the field. And someone's mother is breathing a sigh of relief because they were watching CNN and that's where their, their kid was. Here are some key takeaways, parts one through five. Social media can help us connect in the field if we apply it in a structured way. The potential to enhance our operations is immense. The ability to toggle between and harness the flux of the big picture, as well as the direct services happening on the ground in an organized way will change the way that we operate. And all this can be achieved with simple training and minimal investment. Part six, we've done it.